Anderson Cooper, AC360, CNN Weeknights, 10 Eastern. There's some new information tonight, and if you're already unhappy about the enhanced pat-downs at the airport or those fancy new x-ray machines, you're not going to like this one bit. There's some new research due out this week suggesting many of these gadgets now at about 70 airports around the country cost about $170,000 a pop. They're put there to stop the next underwear bomber. Well, they simply won't do what they promise. They won't detect the kind of bomb the terrorists are using these days. What's more, there's a government accountability office report from back in March raising doubts about the scanners back in March. And on top of all that, we've also learned of another GAO report on real-life testing of how well or how poorly the bomb detectors work. You want to know the bottom line of that study? Well, so would we. But we can't. And you can't. Because the report is classified. And as we said, though, there is new research, and it's not classified. I'm going to tell you about it shortly. But this is all coming to a head right now because of the alternative. These new, tougher pat-downs. They're setting off a backlash. A breast cancer survivor, for example, being told to remove her prosthetic. A man soaked in urine when the TSA agent ruptured his prosthetic bladder. Complaints of children being frisked. Claims of needless groping. Pictures like these causing a major backlash across the country. With that in mind, what does the head of the TCA have to say about it? What, if anything, is he doing about it with the busiest travel weekend of the year coming up? Will there be any changes? Well, apparently not. The public will see what we have been working on the last several weeks in terms of they have the option to not go through the advanced imaging technology in the 70 or so airports where we have those machines. If they do opt out of that, then they receive a thorough pat down to make sure we don't have a Christmas Day type bomber with a non-metallic device concealed on his body. TSA Director John Pistol in the Situation Room, and I'll tell you what, he really sort of hit the nail on the head. The scanners are designed to stop the alleged underwear bomber Farouk Abdul Mutalib. And if you look at the images put out by the scanner makers and the government, you'd think they work pretty well. Take a look at this. Uh, there's a pistol on the left guy's right leg. And on the right-hand guy on his waist, you see a brick of explosives or drugs. But according to the authors of this new study to be published again this week in the Journal of Transportation Security, it's just not that simple or that safe. The machines, they say, are only good at detecting sharp edges. So, for example, look at this. They're testing with dummies. The scanner picks up a water bottle on the left and an iron bar on the right because of those edges. But what it does not catch is this, a smooth, round, deadly pancake of PETN explosive. That amounts to about 320 grams, which is uh, what, four times more than the underwear bomber had. And that would not be detected by the machine. You could get that through. In fact, I think you could probably get even more through than that. That's scanning technology expert Peter Rez. His colleague authored the study we just talked about. But again, there have already been two other investigations of the scanners. And at least one of them, the non-classified GAO report of March 17th, which says this. It remains unclear whether the AIT, meaning the new scanning technology, would have detected the weapon used in the December 2009 incident based on the preliminary information the GAO has received couple of footnotes to all this. Uh, we don't yet have the full version of the private study that's coming out this week, but we don't yet have any version of the study the GAO apparently did. Also, we reached out to the TSA today regarding this report and the classified report, but we haven't heard back from them. And we do have a big travel week ahead, and there's a lot of big questions to ask. So with us tonight, James Fallows. He's national correspondent for The Atlantic, noted author on aviation and national security, and also Fran Townsend, former Bush Homeland Security Advisor and current member of the Homeland Security Advisory Board. Thanks to both of you. Thank you. Hi, Sandra. Uh, Fran, uh, let, me, let me start with you. Uh, I mean, you you've talked uh, quite a bit about this. You say these measures are a deterrent, and, there, and there's obviously something to be said for that, but that GAO report I mentioned and this private study as well say these scanners might not have even stopped the Christmas Day bomber last year. So how, how, how good are these? Well, first we ought to be clear, the, the metal detectors that you normally go through, they wouldn't detect it because they don't detect explosives. The imaging, the advanced imaging technology, these rapid scanners that we're going through now, they also don't detect explosives, they detect mass. And frankly, the question becomes, if they can detect that there is an unexplained mass, it's going to lead you into a pat down. Are any of these things foolproof? Absolutely not. But what you do is you create an operational environment that's unpredictable for our enemies, which means they can't be sure whether or not they can get it through. You increase their risk, which means you increase the likelihood that you're going to throw them off their game. 
Well, you know, I mean, I, I think part of the, part of the, the issue this week, Fran, uh, is, is the backlash. I mean, you hear these incidents of a young boy being searched and his father taking the kid's shirt off to prove the son wasn't a threat. The cancer patient, as I, remove, as I mentioned, having mm -hmm. to remove their prosthetic breast. I mean, are, have we really reached that level of scrutiny? No, and Sanjay, look, look, let me be clear. I'm not uh, I'm being an apologist for any of that. None of that is necessary. And frankly, you know, you travel all over the world. I travel in airports throughout the Middle East. There are private screening areas. None of that ever happens in public. People are able to be spoken to and examined and have a search that is not nearly as sort of public and humiliating. There's no reason to, you don't have to do it the way it's being done. And I think what you're hearing from Secretary Napolitano, John Pistol, the head of TSA is, they understand they haven't gone about this as, as well as they might have and they need to revamp and make sure that people are trained uh, to do this in the least invasive way as possible. And, and to be fair, I think a lot of the TSA agents uh, do try and respect privacy right. as, as much as possible. I travel a lot as well. But Mr. Fallows, I mean, you're, you're calling what we're seeing here security theater. I read one of your articles. I mean, how do you sort of, I mean, this is something you write a, quite a bit about. I mean, how do you balance this? I mean, th this idea of making us safer with these sorts of screening measures. How do you reconcile this sure. in your own mind? It was the great security expert, Bruce Schneier, who, uh, who laudably uh, coined that term security theater. And what he meant is things that looked as if we were preventing uh, threats, but, but uh, left out whole other areas that we're not concentrating on. Of course, metal detectors make sense for going, uh, people going to airports. But if you look at the main sources of, of where we've gotten information about the threats, it's been from a t intelligence networks. Cargo, you can get much more explosive into cargo areas than you could mm -hmm. on a passenger, and there's much less rigorous a screening of cargo now than the passengers going through one by one. So they, it's a question of proportion. I think the sort of outcry of the last week or so is people have been exposed to the pat downs or the privacy intrusions of the advanced uh, imaging technology has brought to bear something which has brought up something that's been discussed for a couple of years, whether it makes sense to have so much cause, so much emphasis on this one aspect of, of uh, the anti-terrorism uh, fight and neglecting out of proportion to a lot of other things which we could be doing.